Um, how affected, effective is the group in bringing justice for the victims? It's kind of a general question. Um, it, it hasn't happened yet, am I right? So yeah. you can't let, really let answer. Let me put it this way. They're dedicated to being effective. They've set up the authorities of the court, refusing to have their hands tied, insisting on using the full weight of law and the full provisions of the UN Convention on Independence of the Judiciary. The, let me put it this way. This court is weaponized. Weaponized. This court is armed to the teeth with every valid binding international law provision that all of the legitimate democratic humanity has ever enacted in the history of law. Okay, well, I would say... And they're and they're using it. I appreciate that. And so once you guys get up and running more, to, more so and have funding, then we'll have to put that to the test because those are bold words and I, mm -hmm. I appreciate them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, obviously we, we have to see what happens. So, okay. But let me quickly tell you the, the short part two to that. Which all right goes to your, the hesitation in, in your follow-up. The part two to that is, it only takes one friendly country to enforce. Talk about enforcement, I know we all doubt it. Yes, the governments are all scoff laws, and they all violate everything, and we have no confidence that any of these countries ever is going to respect one of these judgments. The good news is it only takes one friendly country. Now think about this. Say, you know, you've been persecuted as a dissident or something, and the court, you know, says that, you know, uh, you know, they shouldn't have bombed your house and whatever, right? And so you have your judgment, now you have to enforce it. And, you, and they issue an arrest warrant to somebody in America, right? Some, some senator has to be arrested or something, right? And so what happens then, the country ignores it and ignores it. You think, oh, there's no hope, nobody can enforce it. Well, here's what happens. This is how international judges think. You ramp it up. You issue a contempt of court order. Then you serve the, the um, judgment for contempt of court on the whole Senate or whatever agency to a U.S. federal court. Then the U.S. federal court says, now, now we're going to poo-poo it and ignore you. Then you issue a contempt of court order w against the, the U.S. federal court. Once you ramp it up, then you go international. This can be done quickly. They, could, they can serve these things, you know, every week ramp it up within a month and, and then be shopping it to friendly countries. So now picture this. So now this has escalated from uh, some violation against your personal rights. Now the defendant is convicted. The Senate is convicted. The U.S. federal court is convicted. Then we, get, then we go to the White House, have a contempt of court order against them and a conviction and judgment against them. In international law, this is more than contempt of court. When a country refuses to enforce judgments under independence of the judiciary, that's an international crime. We're talking about additional convictions, not just little contempt of court orders. So we ramp up, and now we get the whole entire U.S. federal government, in this example, convicted, you know, on the White House level. Now, guess what? You go to any other friendly country on the planet, and it only takes one, and you know what they can do? They can enforce the judgment against the U.S. embassy in that country. Now, look, we're looking at the non-aligned movement of 70% of countries in the planet, combined with the BRICS alliance, which brings up to 80% of countries in the world want justice and want freedom and want their sovereignty back and want the rule of law back. Do you think maybe one of this 80% of countries in the world might say, yeah, we'll, we'll have our Ministry of Justice seize all assets of the U.S. Embassy? Hell yes, they will. Venezuela will do it, you know, the, the guys who, uh, you know, which country put up uh, Julian Assange in, in their embassy, Ecuador, Ecuador. will do it, mm -hmm. Russia will do it. There's a lot of countries friendly to this. It only takes one. Okay. And then when the first one does it, then the other ones will follow suit. And then we can shut down every single embassy and seize all of the money in their account as punitive damages. And then, if, and then when those countries do that, they'll also uh, cooperate with the arrest warrants, too. And then you're going to have uh, officials in the country landlocked. You're going to have money actually seized from the embassies. Embassies actually shut down. This is going to hurt. Bad guys, we're, this is going to hurt. And you cannot escape this. It's your own damn fault for being criminals. I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Stop being criminals and you won't get hurt. 